What's up guys? I'm doing and now decided to do like top five lists in different sports and today I'm gonna go back in the time machine as a lot of us want to do I don't know 2019 January any of those would work but here we are now and I'm going to do the top five Braves moves to get us out of the rebuild doldrums because those rebuild years were putrid to watch and for me um i even turned some of those games off and that's saying something as i bleed atlanta braves baseball and that's probably putting it mildly as many of you know me this idea was sparked by the obscure rebuild braves player bracket um dating from nebraska so thank you for this idea and uh contributing to it as well but number five might surprise some of you um i love me some mr consistency and i know he gets a bunch of crap um he is still a very formidable player veteran and perfect for our clubhouse and i think this move signaled that we were on our way up signing him to a 40-year 44 million dollar contract was surprising because we had just started the wheels of the rebuild, training Jason Hayward and some other moves. Um, so bringing in this type of veteran guy that had been um, used to winning with the Baltimore Royals and, and such a key cog in their in their um, playoff runs the previous years, and him coming off neck surgery made it even more surprising. But the thing that uh, made me co-sign this right away was the backlash that the um, former Orioles players had for the front office not re-signing Nick Marquez and allowing him to come to his hometown Atlanta Braves team and just how much Nick Marquez was loved by the players, the coaching staff, and what he brings to a clubhouse and a lineup was needed and needed desperately for the Braves. It just seemed like the the losing ways had set in um, for many reasons, the lackluster farm system at the time and just mm, the inability to um, get those uh, high priced stars because of our payroll and, and many of the large contracts that we were stuck with. So this was a much needed, Nick Markakis is a no nonsense uh, put your head down, do your work, um, kind of veteran guy that just doesn't take any crap at all, and he just comes to work every day and does his job and does it well, and that's the winning attitude and the culture change that we needed. So that's why this one is number five for me. Number four might also su surprise some people. Uh, the Craig Kimball trade came out of nowhere on the eve of opening day 2015, but it was number four for me because we were able to get out of $40 million of BJ Upton's remaining five years, $75.25 million contract that Frank Wren signed. And to be blunt, BJ Upton's career as an Atlanta Brave was, outside of a few moments, was just bad and it, Nothing went well for him. Uh, it was a like a two and a half year slump that you could see bright spots, but it just never happened for him. The Tampa Bay All Star days were long, long um, behind him, and it just didn't work out. And that's as simple as I can put it. But to be able to create that free financial flexibility, add some pieces to our farm system. Yes, I know most of those pieces have moved on or retired or we used in other trades, but it allowed us to build a pretty barren farm system at the time and again, create that financial flexibility. And it also netted us a 41st uh, overall pick that we turned into Austin Riley. And he is a prominent piece of our future right now, battling for the starting third base spot and is also a utility option in the outfield. So that has worked out in our favor in many, many ways. Number three, 
Frank Wren signing Ronald Acuna Jr. and Ozzy Albies in the international um, market. Just absolutely amazing. Two superstars at their position, five tool players, especially Ronald Acuna Jr., but you can throw Ozzy in there as well. Ozzy's a switch hitter. Ronald just does everything, and it's absolutely amazing to have these guys for a decade, 19 years total with their contracts, signing them to one Ronald Acuna Jr., 10 years, 100 million, and Ozzy with the still mind blowing, amazing team friendly contract, nine years, 35 million, with uh, two club options as well. So that just keeps on giving. Thank you, Frank Rin, for that. Number two, uh, the Justin Upton deal with the San Diego Padres. Uh, we were able to get Max Fried, who is our number two starter in our rotation right now, uh, coming off 17. 17 win season last year, one of the most nasty cha curveball changeup combinations that I've ever seen, and a 95 plus mile an hour fastball from the left side. It really can't get any better than that, and he continues to grow. And with those um, other lefties in our organization right now, Cole Hamels and those veterans, it should make him even better, which is even scary to think about. With the Mike Soroka, Max Reed tandem, it's a double trouble tandem that I hope to see in a Braves uniform for a while. Thank you, Preller, for that. And the Justin Upton trade also uh, netted us some salary relief as well. But I think you guys can guess where I'm going with number one, the Dansby Swanson for Shelby Miller uh, trade because it netted us Dansby Swanson and Indian CRJ, also Aaron Blair, who was a top 100 prospect at the time. It just was one of the more, wow, are you kidding me, trades from the Diamondbacks perspective because Danzy Swanson, the number one pick in the draft, you never see the number one pick in the draft get traded after being drafted. It just doesn't happen. But Danzy Swanson has um, morphed into a very, very solid player on both sides of the ball. Um, defensively, always been there in my opinion, but his uh, growth and maturity offensively with the opposite field power, being able to lay off that uh, off-speed pitch and just kind of d do everything, 17 homers, which was the most for Atlanta Bay shortstop since Andleton Simmons. Um, if it weren't for injuries, la uh, Last year, I could easily have seen him hit 25 plus homers, and he had his coming out party with that huge hit against the St. Louis Cardinals in that playoff. So it's, he's just coming into his own, and I think he got used to being being the hometown kid, and he was supposed to be supposed to be the savior. But now he doesn't have to be. He can just be Dansby Swanson, the really, really, really good baseball player. And I still can't believe the D-backs gave him up. But they're doing okay as well as some other trades that they've uh, put together with uh, between us as well. So I think it's kind of even. But we also netted Ender Inciarte, the three-time gold glover, absolutely vacuums everything up in uh, center field. He was a all-star the first year we got him. The premier leadoff hitter you're looking for, but now with Ronald Acuna Jr., you don't need that. He is uh, was putting it together offensively last year um, until the injury bug hit him, but I think he is still a vital, vital piece offensively with his speed and 10-11 uh, homers he can sprinkle in as well. Just being able to get two cornerstone pieces uh, that quickly um, in a trade is unheard of, and John Coppolella being able to pull off that was absolutely amazing and unprecedented at the time. So those are my top five moves that helped the Braves get back to their division winning ways and hopefully playoff series winning ways sooner rather than later. It's going to happen. I feel it in my bones. What do you guys think of my list? As always, go Braves. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Stay inside.